In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in His footsteps, so that being made by His grace, partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in His resurrection and in His life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed His lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in His resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The mysterious servant prefigures Jesus, who identifies himself as the servant who frees all people. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, 
therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like a flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them. And for my vesture, they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you are descendants of Israel. My God, my God, my The glory of Jesus comes from the total emptying of self. His passion and death are his exaltation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ became obedient to the point of death. Please stand. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name.
The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priest with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how, how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested, requested a man called Barabbas, was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scored, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hey, King, King of, the of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon of Ser a Serenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with mirror, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Save others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of, the, King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him, at noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, 
put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two, from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today's celebration is commonly called Palm Sunday, which invites us to contemplate and remember Jesus' last week on earth. Each day has its own particular theme until we reach the climax of the liturgical year in the three-day liturgy we call Easter Triduum, Passion, Death, and Resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today's reading also, we are confronted with two kinds of images. The people rejoicing to see Christ entering Jerusalem, waving their palms, but also with images of profound suffering and degradation. Thus, we find two contrasting events, acceptance versus rejection, death versus life. As I try to reflect on the readings we heard today, I cannot stop to question why would a man enter a place when he knows he will be betrayed? He will, be, he will suffer and eventually die. Maybe because this is the best way that a God can demonstrate his true love by dying for us even if we don't deserve it, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his love. Even if he knows that he will be betrayed, he loved them till end. If this is not love, then what is this? I remember a story when uh, I was uh, still a young seminarian. And the story goes like this. One day, the priest was walking back to his convent, and then he saw a boy carrying a cage with a bird. Then he asked the boy, oh, that is a beautiful bird. What are you going to do with the bird? The boy answered, well, I just caught it, so I'm planning, Father, to play with it, to exhaust the bird, and eventually kill the bird. The priest was so struck with the words of this boy that he said, how much for the bird? The boy said, ah, for all my efforts, for all the time I wasted just to catch this bird, Father, uh, 100 pesos. And the priest gave the boy 100 pesos. Going back to the convent, the superior of the priest saw the priest and asked, what are you carrying? And the priest said, oh, I'm carrying a bird in his cage. And the superior asked, so why are you carrying a bird in that cage? The priest answered, let me tell you a story. Father, one day, while Jesus Christ was walking, he happened to bump on Satan, and he saw that Satan was carrying a cage. And this cage was full of humans, humans who already died. So 
Jesus asked Satan, what are you going to do with that cage and with those humans? And Satan answered, ah, for this useless human, for this human who doesn't even know how to forgive, doesn't even know how to be charitable, how to love, who doesn't even know how to care for one another, and even love God, well, I will burn them, I will wait for them to die, and I will really make them suffer. Jesus was so scared of what Satan was planning, so he asked Satan, how much, how much for those people? And Satan answered, for these useless people, your tears, your blood, your life, and everything was paid. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, as we come to the celebration of Holy Week, I pray and I also challenge you that hopefully we are not like the expectators of Jesus who was welcoming him, uh, entering Jerusalem and waving their palms. But we also become the people who journeyed with Jesus during his suffering, his passion, his death, until his resurrection. Hopefully, I pray that our celebration of this coming Holy Week become very memorable so that we can gratefully thank God for the life he has given us a new life, a life of free from sin, a life full of hope and happiness. Please all stand for the profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, who will that all human beings be saved through the passion, death, and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. We pray, through the passion of Christ, listen to our prayer. Through the passion of Christ, listen to our prayer. May the Pope, bishops, priests, and deacons continue to profess their faith in God. In an indifferent and sometimes hostile world, we pray. Through the passion of Christ, listen to our prayer. May government and civil leaders follow the example of Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life for the good of the people, we pray. Through the passion of Christ, listen to our prayer. May we support the Ale Kappa program as our way of responding to the challenges of restoring social justice and helping the weak and the needy, we pray. Through the passion of Christ, listen to our prayer. May those who continue to crucify Jesus by acts of violence against their brothers and sisters be led to the road of repentance and atone for the evils they have done, we pray. Through the passion of Christ, listen to our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Through the passion of Christ, listen to our prayer. Father, look tenderly on your children as we follow Christ in the joy of his entrance to Jerusalem, as well as in the pains of his sacrifice on Calvary, May we be worthy to enter your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all in His holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels in joyful celebration, we too acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a jewel, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who is Saint Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand there. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, 
and my soul shall be healed. Please stand there. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for an announcement. The Summer Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on April 21, 2021, third Wednesday of Easter. Novena Masses will begin on April 12 until April 20, 2021. The schedule of Masses will be at 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 4.30 p.m. and will be streamed live through the social media platforms of the Minor Basilica and via Manawag Dominican Radio 102.7 FM. We cordially invite you to participate in the Feast and the Novena Masses. If you wish to sponsor one or several Masses during the Feast and Novena, you may approach our Basilica personnel in the religious stores and mass intention counters or visit our website www.manawagbasilica.org or FB page facebook.com minor basilica manawag official. Thank you. Please stand. I would also like to thank my fellow priest, Father Norberto Castillo Opi, for concelebrating with us in this Eucharist. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer for the blessing of the sick. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward the sick brothers and sisters, free them from all illness, and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Panawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, 
they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the blessing of rosaries and other religious articles in memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. May these rosaries, images, candles, oil, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.